Hi everyone, I'm Alex and you're watching Beam Development Update for July 30th, 2020. Since it's been a while since we last released our video update, let me bring you up to speed to what's been happening in the meantime. About a month ago, Beam has successfully executed its second hard fork and changed the mining algorithm to Beam Hash 3, which is a completely new algorithm that you can read about in our Medium. Also, we have released support for many important features, such as confidential assets, uh, max privacy transactions using Lilantus shielded pool, and also offline payments, which is our version of one-site payments. We have also announced our intention to develop a confidential DeFi platform on top of Beam and started releasing materials about this direction. Today, I would like to talk about our next version, which is 5.1, which has a lot of new features and improvements. And also, I will talk about our DeFi architecture plans and it's going to be very interesting. So let's dive in. Let's start with the 5.1, which is the next version that we're currently working on right now and which will be released in the next couple of weeks. So as I mentioned, it has a lot of new features and I would like to start with the transaction tokens. So as you remember, in Beam, we're using SBBS addresses so that the wallets can communicate and create transactions together. Now that we have a lot of new types of transactions, we thought it would be a good idea to take all the parameters of those transactions together with the SBBS address and wrap them in a container that we call the transaction token. So transaction token is similar to the SBBS address in the way that you can copy it and send it to the other part via Telegram or any other external messenger. Only instead of just the SBBS address, it also includes additional parameters. So let's see how it looks like in the new UI. As you can see in the left part of the screen, you see new two, two new switches, one selecting between regular and max privacy transactions, which I will talk about in a few minutes, and the other one selecting between one time and permanent tokens. So if you remember, we had two types of SBBS addresses, those that expire after 24 hours and those that never expire and are mostly used for receiving transactions from pools and exchanges. So since most of people used the 24 hour expiring transactions only once and nobody could really track the time of their expiration, we have decided that it would be a good idea to change them into one time and permanent addresses. On the right part of the screen, you see the usual button that allows you to copy the token and send it to the other side. And you also see the suggestion that if you are using this token for pools and exchanges, you should switch to the permanent addresses. If you select the permanent address, you can see on the right that now you have two options to copy the token. The first one above can be used to send the token to the other wallet. And the second one below is used to send this to exchanges and pools. And the reasons for that is that not all exchanges and pools currently support our new token format. And I'm not talking about the Beam wallet, which is fully backward compatible. I'm talking more about the client side validation. So in certain cases, pools and exchanges validate the length of the address and the token is much longer than the old SBBS address. So this might not work, which is why we have created this option for backward compatibility. And we recommend to use this if you're sending this to pools or exchanges. In the send screen, whenever you paste the token that you have received, it automatically recognizes all the parameters and shows you the exact information about this token, what type of transaction it relates to, and whether this is a one-time or a uh, permanent token. Now let's talk about the other toggle, the larger one, which selects between the regular and the max privacy transactions. So max privacy is basically an ability to send beam transaction through a Lilantus shielded pool. And what it means is that the sender, when he receives the token with the request for max privacy transaction, instead of doing a regular Mimbleweeble transaction, it sends the funds to the Lilantus pool and the receiver immediately sees that the transaction was received, but until the funds are extracted from the pool, they're actually in the pool and they're gaining uh, anonymity set. 
And once you wait long enough for the maximum annuity set of 64K, you will receive completely unlinked annuity exos that are completely unrelated to the previous history of these transactions and thus are much safer and are no longer uh, subject to any kind of linking attacks. In the receiving transaction screen, you will see the indication when these funds are actually have reached this maximum anonymity set. However, whenever you create a transaction, the wallet will be automatically able to select the best UTXOs for you. You don't have to really worry about that. Now, on the right, you may notice that you still have two options to copy the tokens. And the top one is called online token. And it is used just like a regular token where you copy the token and send it to the sender via either um, messenger, telegram, or email, or any other channel that you have. And below that, you have the offline token option. And this is our implementation of these offline payments, uh, one-side payments that you can do. And this allows sender to uh, send funds even if the receiver is not online at the moment. And let me explain a little bit about how this works because it's different from how other cryptocurrencies and Bitcoin implement this. Unlike Bitcoin, which always uses the same address to receive uh, funds at any time, in Beam, due to the way this is implemented via Lilantus, uh, it requires the sender to receive a set of vouchers, um, which are encoded in the, in the offline token, and each voucher is used uh, for one offline payment. So by default, whenever you create an offline token, there are 20 vouchers encoded in the token, which allows the sender to perform 20 offline payments. When these vouchers are about to expire in terms of you've used most of them, the wallet will automatically try to contact the permanent SBBS address, which is also encoded in the token, to get more vouchers. And this will be possible if the receiver is online during a certain period of time. If the receiver is never online and all the vouchers expire, you will receive a notification that you have no more vouchers to send to this uh, contact. And in this case, you can always ask the person to send you a new token, which will new include a new set of vouchers. We believe that it will allow you to uh, pay in as seamless way as possible to the receiver who is not willing to be online at the time of the payment. It's very convenient. It's also very secure since it uses the same max privacy mechanism and it will be seamlessly executed by the wallet without like any problem if uh, you're using this uh, offline token. One thing that it's not really usable for is donations because you cannot really uh, take this offline token and paste it on your website because probably these donation vouchers will expire very quickly. So it is very useful for offline payments between people, but it's not uh, useful for donations or similar scenarios. In 5.1, we have also completely reworked the settings screens, grouping together all the options into three logical groups. Those related to your wallet, those related to connectivity to the node or other node for different currencies that we're supporting the swap with, and those related to the troubleshooting. Since we now have a lot more settings and going to have even more settings going further due to the addition of new features, we believe it would be much simpler to use these settings when they're grouped together. The 5.1 version will also include two very important improvements to our atomic swaps feature. The first one is that we have replaced the output of the lock transaction and the inputs of the redeem or refund transactions with SegWit, which will lower the fees considerably. Also, we have added a mechanism that will provide recommendations for current fees directly from the Bitcoin or other network servers so that you don't no longer have to guess which fees or which amount you have to put there. And this will also simplify things for the users as we saw cases where some people set manually fees that were considerably larger than was required. Of course, we will release more information of, about the upcoming version when it's ready, including the detailed documentation, articles, and additional video tutorials. But now let's talk about Beam Confidential DeFi infrastructure, our plans for the future, what we're going to do with it, and let's start with talking about the types of architecture that we're going to support in this area. So the first type of architecture I would like to discuss is the scriptless architecture. It's the one we've been talking about for a while now. 
And the way it's going to work is that wallets will be able to create contracts using the SBBS system. And we will need some kind of an oracle to give us the price of the asset that's been traded. It could be any asset, whether it's crypto asset or any asset from the real world. And in this case, the oracles are actually used uh, in a more like less trusted fashion because these are not automatic operations. The wallet are in complete control of what contracts they close and what they trade. And once the contract is, cre is, is created and is uh, um, agreed upon, what the wallets basically do is they create direct payment channel between each other using the laser beam that we have. And they lock some amount of collateral, probably in beams or any other confidential asset supported on beam platform. And this collateral is used using this trade. So what kind of applications can we expect using this architecture? Uh, one of them is basically trading futures or perpetual swaps, which is the most common implementation today on the centralized exchanges. And in the next videos, I will give a more precise and you know, detailed example of how this application will work on Beam. We can also have any other CFD trading or binary options or any other um, application that is basically peer to peer and has two parties that want to enter contract against one another. And of course, you can also close your contract or you can sell your contract. And the mechanism will work in a way that if somebody bails on the contract and disappears, there will be enough collateral to punish this person and make this uh, unprofitable for him to bail on the contract. And this is how we were going to incentivize the traders to be honest and to uh, honor the conditions of their contract. The other type of architecture is even more interesting and we call it the BIM script for now. It's like a work in progress name. And uh, it's especially interesting because like, wait a second, how can there be a BIM script if BIM does not support smart contracts? And here there's a new trick that we think are going to be very useful. And it's like one of these magical things that we discover every once in a while in the Mimble Wimble protocol. So the idea is that in regular BIM transaction, we have inputs, outputs and transaction kernels. And since the kernels remain in the blockchain forever and <clears throat> they are not removed during the cut through process, we can actually encode more metadata into the kernels about these UTXOs and these transactions. And we're using this feature today already in many cases. So in this specific implementation, what's going to happen is that the kernel is going to consume the input UTXOs. And instead of creating new output UTXOs, it will update a state variable inside the node. Now, this state variable can be a part of a contract, a set of state variables and can have some script related to this contract, which will be able to perform various mathematical operations on these variables. And of course, as a reverse process, as a result of the script, new output UTXOs will be created and sent out as new transactions. So this new type of architecture will allow us not to just create peer-to-peer -peer trades, but also implement many of the building blocks that are used today in DeFi such as pools of liquidity or pools of money that you can distribute or pay dividends on. And this will allow us to go into applications such as lending or like more um, interesting stuff like stable coins and things that require you know, more on-chain operations. And of course, this will also use a different set of oracles, those that are more reliable and can be used on-chain. The combination of these two architectures will allow us to create a wide variety of DeFi applications and support a lot of different interesting use cases. And so these are all the updates we had for today. Thank you very much for watching. Please subscribe to our channel and join our communities, participate, ask questions, and please send your proposals, what new things we should talk about going forward or any questions that you might have. Thank you very much and have a great day.